Hello guys, welcome to Off the Record, a special project of Beat series specifically catered for casual conversations with our guests. We do this so we can get to know them beyond their careers, the humans behind the jobs. Expect pressing talk of the town questions and fun challenges. If you haven't listened to the episode first on Jika's path, we highly suggest you to start there first. In today's segment, we are joined by food blogger and vegan recipe developer Jika Uy. Hello, Jika. Welcome to Off the Record. Hi, Lance. Hi, Matt. Hello. Yeah, thanks okay. for having me. <laughs> you know, the, the part of Off the Record starts with the big question part, wherein we gathered questions from our audience, the bayu mga tanong na mga general questions about Jika Uy. Um, so, by the way, thank you for our sponsor, Nara Wood and Watches, for helping us with this segment. Number one big question, uh, Jika. Okay. Um, with your many, many followers on TikTok, what was the most heartwarming comment that you've received from your fans or from your followers? And what was the most hurtful or, you know, nakaka, nakaka-discouraged na comment that you've read? Mm. Okay, let's start with the with the most encouraging one. I mean, actually, no, I don't have a one key like encouraging one. They're like, in general, parang when I get comments saying like, like messages, like some people really take the time to take a picture of the food they made and they like message me like a really long message like, oh, hi, um, my mom is Filipina, like, but she was born in the US. I'm not Filipina and I made her like your tofu adobo and she loved mm. it. And yeah. like, she was telling me like how Um, she's not vegan, but her mom is like trying to cut down on meat, so she made like the adobo for her mom. And it's like, like fine, those, those like little moments. So fine, when they take the time to like message you and let you know, fine, makes you super happy, like to do what you're doing. Um, so there are a lot of occasions on that. Some naman where like they have kids who don't eat a lot of vegetables, but they got to feed them like sneak in those vegetables from making vegetable pancakes, like. Oh, I got my kid to eat um, these vegetable <laughs> pancakes. They love it. Like the, they sent like videos of the kids and like the that like high chair and stuff eating. So parang th- those like moments like they really like warm your heart. To, like Ganda. yeah, parang it's like very fulfilling. Um, I think the mga like na kasakit na comments I get sometimes. It's like some people like they don't know there's like a human behind the look what they see. Yeah. And sometimes they think it's like what like are we not. Are we, are we not allowed to share our thoughts and feelings in like this space? Um, I got a bit political like pre pre elections. I mean, I was sharing <laughs> like Lenny stuff. Like, mm-hmm. I was yeah. I was I wanted I was she was my president, so I posted like Lenny stuff, and they're like, I'm leaving. I'm like, uh, I'm so disappointed in you. Um, I didn't come here for like political stuff. I came here for the food, and I'm like. I answered respectfully. I was like, well, this is my personal account. Like, if you're not happy with what I share, then you're free to leave or you're free to yeah. just scroll elsewhere. So, yun, parang sometimes it's like people expect na you're just there because like they follow you for food. Like, you're only allowed to share food. Yeah. Um, some people, parang, yun, when they automatically see you do something different, they're like, suddenly questioning, like, what, what, why you're doing something different? Or before, when I was still in college, I didn't have as much time to post. So, there are days that I really disappear for like three, four days, maybe be out for a week. I got some like I got a message before of this parang this person just saying like why do you suddenly just disappear and come back like wow yeah I so I was that. just like so do I owe I don't owe anyone yeah. like anything here exactly. so if I post I'll post if I don't like I hope you understand I have a life outside of what I do diba? so mm, yeah. you know there are like some hurtful comments apparently sometimes I'm just like what do you expect me to always be here so sometimes like I I try to get over that that guilt I feel sometimes when I get a lot of like messages that I can't go through because yeah. I get a lot of messages like every day and I try to go through them, especially on Instagram. Um, but there are really days that I can't get through everything. So parang, I hope people understand that I'm only one person. Like, I don't have a team. So in terms of like, messages, I can't go through everything. So if they don't reply, like I'm sorry, but I hope some people understand. Buto yung nagreply si Jika sa amin. I check, I check emails. I check, I check emails. I check emails. Alam niyo na guys ha sa email, sa email dama. I check emails. So sometimes yeah, I, mean, I also like miss some emails, but I try, yeah. I try to get through everything. Yeah, I mean, I I totally get you, especially with this generation, de ba? Yung parang the canceled culture is yeah. is very, de ba? May isa ka lang ipost na mali. Man, you're like a TikTok influencer by night, and tomorrow you're gone. Diba? Yeah, Parang like people... the cancel culture is really bad. Yeah, it, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. 
So I guess to lighten the mood, no. <laughs> we know that we know that you love pottery. Um, and actually use like the ceramic uh, plates or pieces to kind of plate your food. How did you discover the world of pottery, and why was it important for you to kind of like uh, incorporate your pieces, your the 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 pottery pieces you make into food he takes flight uh, in plating yeah. your foods? Actually, this started more of like I love. But I like to cook. So parang, and like, I like taking pictures. So, you know, sometimes with, like food styling and like photography, parang there's some plates right. that looks good on like camera and like certain backdrops. Uh-huh. And I had such a hard time looking for plates in the Philippines. Because parang I think the pottery scene here wasn't so big yet, like a few years ago. So I was really struggling. Like I'd be scouring like random parang, um, home goods shops and like checking like online where I can get like nice pieces. Until like fourth year college, um, I had like two free electives. And in UP, there's a pottery, there's a ceramic studio and there's a pot, there are pottery electives. So I took, I took a pottery elective, like fourth year, first sem, I took a pottery elective. It was like the basics. And then, oh my God, like I fell in love with clay. Like my, my prof was saying, about, like after like a few months in, really? like, oh, I know, Miss Uy, <laughs> nakaka-addict, no? Like ang sarap ng feeling ng clay, no? It's like, because like it's, a, it's a very forgiving medium eh. like when you make something example you have like a bowl na, you don't like it just Pwede just break it down like it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's gonna be a bowl of clay again That's so a in nice case na, you have a bowl and then you let it dry parang even if it's bone dry like yung matagas na siya, mm. as long as it's not tired yet if you're not happy with it just soak it soak it in a tub of water pagbalik mo malleable clay na naman siya. so I really like enjoyed that phase na parang it was very therapeutic rin. when I was doing my thesis I'm just like in the studio, like, making plates or bowls. So I think that's really how I got into it. But also now, parang, I think because of the process of making plates and bowls, all the more now I appreciate the work of, like, ceramicists and potter, like, potters. Talaga. Like, there's so much work that goes into, like, a single piece. So now when I see, like, certain pieces I really like, yung parang, like, even secondhand, I'm like, parang you see, like, you kind of look at the different parts and you're like, oh, parang, you have to make this, you have to do that to make the shape. You learn to like value the stuff that goes into it. Yeah, so that's like, I think how my love for pottery started. It's like a hobby and then, mm. yeah, it's still a hobby now. Like, I, I still love doing it. Mm. Yeah. Thanks to would, my would you, would you take it further? Um, Perhaps, I don't know, like uh, finding a career out of it or you want it as a, <laughs> parang a, a decom, ano ba tawag dun? Like a distressor talaga yeah. na medium. Like, um, I took it. I took the. I took the advanced class in the second sem. For the year. I was like, <laughs> I did pottery for the whole year. To the point that my prof was like, Miss Uy, de ba my thesis ka? Why are you still here? <laughs> I'm like, because like I've I've been a pottery studio like past pla past class hours. Eh, like two three hours long oh. class. I'd be there till like six p.m. for another like four hours. Ganun, so I really enjoyed it. It's more of a de-stressor. I think I'll keep it as a de-stressor, like parang as a hobby on the side. I don't ever see it being like a career for me maybe like if i become really good at it maybe i can sell like some of my pieces but right now i just enjoy doing making stuff for myself and like to give out to people nice okay off to the next um big question for jika at the young age of 24 please correct me if if i got that right now it feels like you've achieved a lot already right and it seems like you're at your happiest too fighting for what you're passionate at, diba? Kung sinabi nga nila, if you know the concept of ikigai, wherein nag, natug, nagtutugma mm, yung yeah. where the world needs you, where your passions are at, and where you're good at. And you're, we see that Foodie Takes Flight is technically at that epicenter na, diba? With this all, you know, with you right now, what are some things that you still want to achieve still, maybe in the next five years, for Jika Uy um, as a person? Um, well, the thing is, you know how like people are like, oh, how does it feel like being there? Honestly, like I I stopped first like few weeks of 2022. I was like, what what I asked myself, like, what now? Like a lot of my friends are asking me, like, oh Jika, what are your goals this year? Like, what do you want to do? Honestly, I didn't know. I still don't know. Um, parang, I think there's like there's like a pro and a con to being able to do a lot at a young age. Like there's that sense of fulfillment, of course. Like looking back, it's like, hey, I got to do these, but Parang you get to the point where you're like you don't know where else to go because parang you've done everything you want to do. Like the cookbook, honestly, to this day, I can't believe like it's there. Cause like it always just in the back of my head, like, hey, one day you want to write a cookbook. 
when I started like my my food stuff, parang one day maybe that's like the the the, the cherry on top na I'll, I'll write a cookbook. And it happened. Then now it's like that was like the cherry on top now. Like what what now? Um, so yun parang honestly like I've been on a major soul searching mode. I don't really know what to do. Um, I'm actually considering going to culinary school next year. I'm gonna. It's actually always been a lifelong mm. dream. I've yeah. I had a phase like grade school. I love the movie Ratatouille growing up. For yeah. sure. Oh. Like I, that was like my favorite movie. Like yeah. before I had the dream, I'd open a restaurant in Paris with the view of the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, just so happens that there are some culinary schools offering plant based programs now. So wow. I'm considering next year when we go to culinary school. But I want to fulfill, I want to like achieve that dream, Ren, of studying abroad and going to culinary yeah. school. Why not, why not like yeah. make, like just make both, I do, I hit two birds with one stone, the right? like abroad and like culinary school. So I think that's the next thing we're going towards. Um, have, you, have you ever tried uh, recreating ratatouille? <laughs> what do you call that? Dish? Is that the, literally? Ratatouille, literally. Yeah, ratatouille, yeah, literally. literally. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, oh. No, it feels not, so not exactly. hard, though. No? Yeah, it's Parang... like there's so much technical skill. Of <laughs> exactly. Parang, I don't have the technical skill. I mean, like, I, I cook a lot at home, but it's like, just a, I'm just like a home cook. So I oh, want to learn, cook, like, the, like, the professional, like, technical skills yeah. and, like, the, an actual that seems kitchen. Like a, that seems yeah. like a great next goal. Right? It's yeah. big enough, but it's still... Co- Saying through to your, you know, being yeah. a vegan cook, de ba? Yeah, so that's the okay. like okay. next thing you want. Parang upscaling ano awesome. sa sa corporate. Um, yeah. I guess the next question here is, um, like lately, like the past few years, definitely there has been a trend to go vegan. So you can see all of these like popular restaurant chains like McDo or Burger King when they release mm. vegan burgers, de ba? Um, is that something you kind of applaud or appreciate, or is it, or or do you feel like it's more of like a corporate gimmick to sell more burgers mm-hmm. or sell more, uh, sell more of their stocks? Um, for me, I appreciate it, like because especially in the Philippines, like, parang mm-hmm. vegan food isn't re- like readily accessible. Like you can't just go drive through somewhere and go like I'll order a vegan burger. But with them, right. it makes it more accessible for like everyday people who are like rushing to work. I need to go drive through somewhere, get a meal um, before I go home or before I go like to the office. So for me, mm-hmm. it's both a, a good and a bad thing, I guess. If you look at it, like good is because it's really accessible and available. And it's also really affordable. Um, and like people like can see it, like, hey, they're plant, there's plant-based. And there's a demand for it. Like they're launching like a plant-based burger. Or, like in Burger King, they have now like the plant-based chicken sandwich. Yep. Um, and I think the like con to it the same with like parang local like um companies launching mga vegan food brands like century pacific and san miguel foods are all bringing out their own like vegan line is that it's actually killing the smaller companies because like these companies have better margins so they can like um price their products lower because they also produce them at much bigger scale oh, man, no? oh, man. Yeah. yeah like yeah. it's already in groceries because they have like fda stuff na Mas abilis na process because they have like existing products in the market versus smaller homegrown brands who are still trying to penetrate the um, groceries in the Filipino market who are now suddenly having to battle like the chain like the difference in price. Namalang people are also like looking at like hey which one's cheaper which one is more affordable. So for me it's both good and bad. Good is because vegan food is now more accessible. Bad is because like homegrown brands are hurting a bit because of like the competition. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jika. Okay. Um, next question for me, uh, which is a bit more hypothetical. No? Okay. Why do you think that God didn't create the world as vegan? <laughs> bakit, bakit, alam mo yun? <laughs> Why didn't he just start making everyone vegan from day one? I don't think he instilled anything to us. Like, you know how he created man and woman and just went like, okay, you guys are free to roam the earth. Tapos, you make your own decisions. So I don't think, in a way, like us, we're like, we have, we're like free thinkers. Like, we can think on our own. No one controls our decisions and our choices. I think in the same way, na he let us be. He's like, okay, it's up to you and your conscience what it is you want to do and what not to do. And I think that that's how the world went. Like, we just made decisions and our choices. It affected certain, like, elements in this planet and that's how the world works now 
and parang kahit paano na form yung like what's right and what's wrong and over the years that's just that's just what happened do you think um given you had you you know a pot of wishes and you you have the option to change the world to all vegan would you make that well why not like if it's doable like why not diba like, i think nothing nothing wrong nothing bad will happen if the world was the world was vegan the same yeah. way na, now it's like everyone is just like we're like omnivores diba so i think if there's Tama. a way to reset then why not give it a try if it doesn't work out people can go back to like eating meat or like incorporating meat and like fish in their in their diet so i think there's always like a parang if you have the chance to try something out on like a global scale like why not It, it's so cool that you're able to say if everyone's vegan there's well there's nothing wrong that will happen because if everyone's like carnivorous la tayo obese <laughs> right so parang naman. grabe para hindi ko para hindi naman hindi naman parang i think as a community like a global community parang we fall into like a culture of overconsumption There it's not go. just in the There animal products yeah. also in like the fast fashion industry So because like um like veganism veganism isn't like once you get into veganism you also see like environmental impacts and it's not just on like the animals it's also on like the planet in a sense that a lot of companies are like mass producing like clothing and mm-hmm. there's also that issue of like um forced labor sweatshops and the fact that a lot of companies are just pushing out like super cheap clothing at to what expense Like if you think of like buying a shirt for this price, you have to think of like how is that price? How is the price of the shirt super cheap? It's either like really mass produced or people like are ba- like barely getting paid to make it. So parang yung marami ring stuff factors in my head na the overconsumption on a global scale is really what's also killing the planet. Like if you look at the, the dyes of the shirt, like yung mga shirts na one to wears and it's like. Deformed or like bad in quality, and they just throw it out in landfills. Why am I going on? So, there are factors. It's really mm, yeah. the over consumerism, talaga. No? Mm-hmm. Okay. Sorry, it was kind of heavy. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, I'm that's why we call it big questions. Eh, sponsored uh, by Nara Wooden Watches. Now, for the I guess the last question for um, this segment, uh, I guess we want to highlight who has been your uh, biggest critic. And who has been your biggest supporter in your life? Definitely my parents and my my family. Like my family is like, because we're big foodies. Like my family loves to eat. So my biggest critic is like my dad, and he's also like my biggest supporter. So I think it goes both ways. Now when I cook something for the first time and he tries it, he'll be like, "Oh, but how you could try doing it like this or season it this well, this this way." But when he tries something and you get like, oh, this is good. You should you should post this, Kenyan. I get like an automatic like, oh my gosh, yeah, it's approved, you know. That was yeah, like my 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 parents are my biggest supporters sometimes. Like, na yeah, ako sometimes. I really get conscious when people talk about like my food stuff in front of me. And my dad, like, parang stage dad sometimes. He meets like a friend he hasn't seen in a long time. The first thing he does, he brings out his phone. He's like, oh, you know, my daughter has like a food blog. And I just want, <laughs> like, I just want to hide, you know. So. They're like my biggest critics, also my biggest supporters, and like my friends. Um, I have like my friends like saw me talaga throughout like the years na vegan na ho. So now whenever we eat out, they're like, "Oh, Jika, um, what do you want to eat? Or is there like something you eat at this restaurant and stuff like that?" Like they always take into consideration. Like my friend just messaged me kanina. She's like, "Cause we're um, it's her birthday on uh, it's birthday her birthday today, and she's eat we're eating out on Saturday." And he's like. Ah, uh, Jika, Jika, I'm ordering food now for Saturday. Is can you eat this? Can you eat that? You parang ganon. Like for me, the thought na like people, it's kind of like indirectly supporting you. Also, it's like just always like yeah. thinking of, like you and what you could eat somewhere. Like make right, sure yep. there are options for you there. Just for me, the the thought itself is like big support na. Ganda, ganda. I mean, let's clip it that's, and that's, send it to your dad. Diba? <laughs> oh my! I think that's as Asian as it gets, de ba? Parang whenever we've achieved something in life. To get our parents' approval, even if you don't want to admit it, is like the best feeling in the world, yeah, right? Yeah, like the best feeling. Yeah, I, I totally get you. Okay, uh, with that, thank you, Jika. Uh, you know, Jika as a person, right? More than just foodie takes flight. Thank you for joining us um, in Off the Record, right? If you like our special episode, everyone follow us as well in Facebook, IG, LinkedIn, and YouTube for exclusive content. 
If you want to learn more about our guests, you can reach Jika in Facebook, IG, TikTok, and of course, her blog, Foodie Takes Flight. Thanks, guys, and see you again. See you. Thank you.